everyone, my name is Leanne Reimel. I'm a principal admin evangelist here at Salesforce, and I love Flow Builder. Flows are a great way to build really streamlined experiences for your users, powerful screens within your Salesforce apps, and backend automation. And today, we're gonna to take a look at how we can get started with flow screens by creating a very simple screen flow that allows us to give our users the power to create records with a certain set of values um, within a screen without having to go create a new record or even use an action. So it's a really great way to get started with flows and to get comfortable with screen flows and how we can start building components within them. So let's take a look. Okay, so for this flow, we are going to be creating a very simple screen flow to put onto our project page. We have a custom object for projects. And we also have a custom object that's related to projects called project feedback. Just to take a look at project feedback, on project feedback, we've got some really basic fields. We've got details, text area, a checkbox on whether or not it requires escalation. We also have a rating pick list. So it's got a one through five options for our pick list rating as well as the project that it's related to, so that master detail relationship. So let's jump into creating our flow. So we're gonna to go to Setup and go to Flows, and we'll click New Flow. So right off the bat, we select what type of flow we'd like to do. So if we were doing a flow that was going to do kind of powerful backend automation, uh, flows that we would want to trigger from Process Builder, from other places, that would be an auto-launched flow. That's a flow that doesn't um, engage with their users like, visually at the time. However, screen flow is what we would be building with when we want to have screens that we can surface to our users in lightning pages, um, on their mobile devices. So those screens are how we create kind of that user interaction. So we're gonna select screen flow and click create. So now I'm on my flow canvas. This middle part here is our canvas and on the left, we've got our toolbox. And within the toolbox, we have all of our elements. So these are the things that we can do with our flow. And we also have our manager. So we'll see this fill up as we add more um, resources and as we work with our flow. But the manager is all the things that we've created within this flow and values that we might be working with throughout the flow. So first, let's add our screen. So we're gonna bring our interaction element over for screen. And now I can start building my screen. So right off the bat, I've got some of our screen properties on the right, like screen label. And so we're going to call this, let's say, project feedback screen. And it's a good habit to get into, especially when you're starting to build or if you're building with other people to add good descriptions. So this screen is what users will be filling out on the project page to create project feedback. Great. And we also have options that we'll come back to um, within the screen properties, but let's get to adding some values first. So on the left, we have all of our components. So these are the different uh, components that we have the option to add to our screen. Some of these will look familiar if you've worked with custom fields before, like checkbox and date. Um, but we also have more options that we're gonna work with as well. So first up, let's add some display text. Display text just is a way to add kind of coaching or um, additional information, description information. We'll just call this display text. And this is where we can, our users don't have to do anything with the display text, it's just display. So they're not gonna like select anything on here. Um, if I have additional resources, like this is where if I had a template, things like that, like text templates, I would add those here. However, for this, we're just going to maybe add some text. So I'm gonna start with my little emoji, make sure they know that it's happening little announcement. Let's ask them to please fill out this project feedback. Great. So we've added that. Now let's add some more detailed information that we'd want to ask. So we saw that we had a details text field on the project feedback object, and we're going to add a details long text area here with that long text area option. So we'll just call this details. And we don't need to insert a resource because we want this to be a a blank value um, that they're, you know, blank text area that they can fill out. Now, we also want to know if it requires escalation. So let's go ahead and select our checkbox for escalate, our checkbox here. And we can call this requires escalation. And maybe we can make this a little fun also and put like a little emoji in here. So 
this is again just a checkbox we don't need to add for this example we're not adding any defaults or um, it's going to be defaulted to unchecked and we want them to have to check it um, if they do require escalation so these are pretty simple elements we've been adding so far we've added display text we've added a checkbox and we've added a text area and those all match or at least these two match kind of what we had in that object that we looked at in our project feedback object right we looked at this here we've got our needs escalation checkbox and we've got our details long text area but we can also get creative with how we're using these screen components in how we're gathering information or surfacing information in flows so in for our rating let's go ahead and try out the radio buttons so we'll call this rating Great, so we've got rating, we've got the name, but what values do we define for those radio buttons? So when we're selecting screen components like radio buttons, like a pick list, we have to define what those choices are. And so here we're going to actually add a resource to define the choices. And we're going to select a resource for a pick list choice set so a resource, when you create resources in flows, these are kind of buckets to store data or store information in that you can use throughout your flow. So it brings information or, or data, metadata from your, um, your Salesforce apps that you've built and your objects that you're working with and brings them into this flow so then you can use them throughout the flow. So we'll call this the um, rating pick list choice set. And we'll say this variable return, whoops, hold on. This resource returns all of the values available in the project feedback rating pick list. And so here's where we actually have to define what it's going to be. So we're going to say feedback. Yes, it's going to be project feedback. The data type is pick list, not multi-select pick list. And now we have the option to select that pick list field from the object of project feedback and how we want the information presented. So we're just going to say default order of field because I know I already have it um, sorted one, two, three, four, five. And so when we do that for our choices, instead of having to manually say we want the choices to be one, two, three, four, five, we can say no matter what the values are, if I maybe change this pick list and setup to be one through 10, those options will automatically be surfaced here as choices, because instead of hard coding it here, we're saying, just look at what's in the values in the, that pick list. So now we've added our rating. Great. So let's go back and just take a look. So we've got our fields here, we've got our label, and we do have the option to do show header, show footer and our navigation. So because this is a pretty simple flow, we don't have a previous because they're never going to have a previous screen and we're not going to have a pause. Um, so it's great to kind of remove any possible sources of confusion or options that are not necessary from your screen. So we're going to say done. Awesome. So now we've got our screen completed and we don't know yet though how this flow starts. So we have our start here, but they're not connected. So you drag the little circle here in order to define what is the first thing that your flow should do. And the first thing our flow is going to do is it's going to show this screen. So that's how we define the start here. Um, it's a good habit to get into to always save your work. So let's go ahead and save this right now. And we will call this project feedback screen flow. Great. And again, descriptions, this flow gathers project feedback on the project page and creates a new project feedback record. Okay, awesome. And the type is screen flow. So we're going to go ahead and save that. Now we have a warning. This is great. We kind of know, wait, our flow is not done yet because we've created the screen so our users can engage with it, but there's no, nothing happens, right? We haven't said we're going to create a new record yet. So let's go ahead and bring over. Oh, and just to pause for a moment, we can jump into our manager and now we have more resources in our manager. So we have those things that we've been creating, like our pick list choice set, all of those screen components. So when we added components to that screen, then it created them as resources. So we can work with them elsewhere in our flow. And we have our screen element that we created. So let's go ahead and say we want to create records. 
once they fill this out. We'll call this create new project feedback record. Great new feedback record with, whoops, bad typing, with values from the screen. So for this, we want to create one record and we're gonna select, we can say, how do we set the fields on that, right? Cause we have to define what is this new record going to look like? And we're going to select separate variables, resources, and literal values. And we'll dive into why we select that in just a moment. So the object we're going to create is feedback. Well, and the reason that we want to do separate variables is because there's information that we want to populate on this new record that isn't necessarily information that came from the screen, like the project ID. So um, when we're setting our field values, we can see, and it's a little confusing because the arrow goes this way. Um, it goes from right to left. And so on this left column here, we can select what is the field value in project feedback. So these are all of the field values in our project feedback object. So we'll select details first. And then here is where we set what will be the value of that. So we've got our field on the left, we're creating a new record, what's going to be that value? And if I scroll down, I can see all those resources that I created when I created that new um, screen. So we've got our details long text area under our screen component. So this is saying we want the values that the user is entering into that details screen component to populate the value on the details field on this new feedback record. Now let's go ahead and keep going. So we've also got to populate our need, whether or not it needs escalation. So again, we can go down and we can look at our screen component requires escalation. So it'll match what's being entered with that new, um, that new record that's being created. And if we select our rating, so here's where we don't want to select one of these, these pick list options, because then it'll kind of hard code all of those new records would be a four, for example. So we make sure to go down to the screen components and select rating. So that'll mean the value that they select in the screen component is what will be populated here. Now the last one we need to fill out is project, but we don't have the project ID yet, right? We need to create a place to store the project ID when a user is engaging with this flow so that then we can use that project ID to decide where should this new project feedback record be created. So what we're going to do is create a new resource and we will call this a variable and we'll say cur project because this is going to be where we store the project ID on the pro of the project on which the user is completing this screen. So we're going to call this the variable to store the current project ID. Our data type will be text. We're not going to allow multiple values. And we want to make this available for input because we need to populate this project ID from outside of this flow. So we need, if we're going to be working with flows, screen flows or auto launch flows, if we're going to be um, putting them on record pages and surfacing them on record pages and they're really record specific, or if we're going to be working with them with process builder processes, for example, we want to make this available for input because that's how these other parts of Salesforce can populate these variables from outside of the flow. So we've created our new uh, variable for current project. And so now we can go ahead and populate that here, current project, great. So now we also need a place to store that new project ID. Um, so when we're creating this new record, we wanna make sure that we have a place to store that new project ID within this flow, should we want to work with it elsewhere as well. So the resource type will be variable and we'll call this new project feedback stores new feedback record and the data type will be text great and we'll say done so now here we can say okay we also want to store that project feedback id so now we've created the new records or defined how we set the values of that new records and we still need to make sure we're connecting this so that our flow knows we start with that screen 
and then we go ahead and get the new records. So for example, if you were doing a flow that was surfacing a number of different record values, like different record IDs or record names, um, you might have a get records that comes before your screen. And so this is where we wanna make sure that we have uh, connected everything. Great, let's go ahead and always good habit to get in habit of saving. Now let's go ahead and debug it. So first I'm gonna jump into a sample record and I'm gonna pull the ID. So I'm gonna copy this to my clipboard. Now when I click debug, I can see what this flow will look like and I can actually test it. And this is where, because that variable was set as available for input, I can paste that project ID and say run. So now we've said we've started with this screen. I can select some values here. Great. And now on the right, I can see the debug details. So I can see that what values were entered onto the screen, what choices the user selected, and that a new record was created. And it looks like it's a success. I don't have any error messages. It says, you know, a record is ready to be created when this interview finishes. Great. So now we're ready to add it to our page. So let's go ahead and go back to our flow screen or our flow setup area. So first we have to make sure to activate it because I can see here on all my flows, this one's not activated. So I go back into the flow and I make sure to click on the kind of hyperlink name there so I can see the details about the flow. If I had more versions, this is where the versions would be, but I can choose which version I'd like to activate and actually activate it from here. So now this is status active, great. So I'm ready to add it to my page. So let's go back to our project page and let's go ahead and say edit page. So one of the great things about Flow Builder is that you can easily surface flows within the page. So it gets really powerful for um, being able to declaratively build components, right? There's so much you can do with it once you start experimenting with and playing with all of those different screen components. But for now, we're gonna add ours. So I go down and one of our standard components is flow. So let's go ahead and just bring it right here on the right. Great. And this is where I have the option to add my screen flow. Now, if you don't see your flow here, make sure that it's activated. Um, the only flows that are available to be added here would be flows that are both screen flows and activated. So those are the two things. If you're not seeing it here, um, make sure that it's activated. And it says, yeah, active screen flows, great. I can choose my layout. So if I was doing, for example, like a lightning app page and I wanted to have a flow that took up you know, the whole page, I could start to adjust the layout here. Now this is where I've got that variable available for input. Again, because I checked that box, if you don't see this, the Curve project, make sure to go back to your flow and you can actually just open your flow and make sure that that in your manager, that Curve project is available for input. So that's how you can always go back and check. So you can always do a new version and do a save as um, and create your new version of this. But if you don't see that Curve project, then that might be the issue. And so I could hard code it if I wanted to here and just set the value, but I, or I could say, pass the record ID on which the user is into the variable. Great, so we're gonna say save. Awesome, let's go back and test it out. So now when I go back to my page, I've got my handy little screen here, and I can go ahead and select some values. Awesome, so when I save it, it created that new feedback record for me. So that's how we can create and use Flow to create uh, screen components and create new records. And I hope you have fun with the new Flow Builder. Awesome, so that was just dipping our toe into creating Flow screens. It's a great tool to get started with and to start experimenting with and building flows on your own. If you wanna learn more, the best place to do that is at Trailhead, so go ahead and Go do this flow trailhead module pictured at the bottom. The link is also in the description. And we do a ton of videos like this to help you get hands on. So make sure to visit our page at admin.salesforce.com and subscribe to our channel. That's all for today and I'll see you next time.